today on Be Something Wonderful. With God, all things are possible except this. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I had some amazing sessions yesterday. And in one of the sessions, we had a pretty big breakthrough. And she was mentioning something that was also mentioned on the channel in some comments that I was going back and forth with one of you on that said, Tom, when you say that God knows nothing of our fear, knows nothing of doubt, knows nothing of non-fulfillment and all that, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me if how can the, um, how can the all-knowing, the all-powerful not know anything of those things? And guys, I really want to hit this today more than I ever have before. Because remember, when you're thinking from that perspective, that God must know my suffering, must know my fear, I, that might make you feel better. But it doesn't, it, it takes total control as you as a conscious creator out of your hands. You're putting, you're put, again, putting your, your fate, the control of your reality in a God outside of you. Right? Because we, I just want to remember this. God only knows what God created. And if God knew fear, if God knew lack, if God knew limitation, if God knew the possibility of non-fulfillment, God would become that in the knowing of it. And now God would become something impossible, the opposite of what God is. Do you hear this? There's no opposite to all that is, that love, that presence. And so when, when you're saying that God must know those things, then that would, God then would recognize those things as real. And God didn't create those things. I really want to hit this, right? You're, remember, we were made in God's image. God was not made in our image. And when you ask a question like that, you're assuming that God was made in our image or you're pointing to that, right? Remember, God's not a person. God's a presence within us. It's that divine presence. It's that love within us. All the fear, all the suffering, all the ideas of non-fulfillment, we make up. Right? And when I say, and when I, um, when I lightly touch on it and say, God knows nothing of grammar, or, and I think you were mentioning, how can God not know anything of language? Remember, all of those things are man made. All of those things are a part of duality. God speaks, and God knows and feels with that love, with that heart, and knows nothing but that. Because if it did, it would recognize that. And now God would be in the weeds with us. All right, so I really want to hit that. I'm going to touch on that again. And, and today's lesson is going to be powerful because we had a real breakthrough with one of our clients when she said she really doesn't know how to get to this fulfillment, how to feel it, how to maintain it, how to reach for that feeling. And I really want to talk about this today. And in today's lesson, guys, is going to, a lot of things are going to come out of The Science of the Mind by Ernest Holmes. This is my copy. This is an original copy from 1938. Science of the Mind. And it's such a powerful teaching. I'll leave a link below. Uh, and, I'm, and I've had videos on Science of the Mind. Some, a lot of my earlier videos are on that. And so if you, if you browse, you'll find some information on it. Today, though, I want to hit this idea that, yes, with God, all things are possible except non-fulfillment. Again, God, if God knew non-fulfillment... God would, that means God's recognizing that that's possible and it's impossible. God is just complete, whole, divine, and love. Do you hear this, right? Fulfillment is not out there. You keep looking for it out there in 3D where it's not. You're only going to see non-fulfillment. You're going to see a partial perception of that ultimate love, of that ultimate reality of God, right? When you are preoccupied with seeing it, in, in manifested 3D reality, you miss the love, the light, and the power of it already existing within you. When you look to the outside world or to anything else for fulfillment, you miss the fulfillment. It's within you. You're looking in the opposite direction of it, right? You're not seeing that power, that light. You're missing it all. You're looking where fulfillment is not, right? God's within you. And among, uh, and among you and everything. 
God's everything, but God is one thing that God is not is not is non fulfillment because it doesn't exist. There's no opposite to God. Do you hear this, right? 3D reality is just an expression, or in other words, a perception of that dimensionally larger you, all that is, that you are choosing to experience right now. That less than 0.1% of the wholly unlimited you. But within that 0.1% is also the whole. Do you hear it? So also within that, that partial perception is the whole of God. You're just not seeing it. We talked about the holographic nature of reality, where in every part of the whole, every part of the whole ex exists the whole. And, and it's non-local, meaning it's everywhere at all time. So I really want to hit this. You're here to express that multidimensional you. I've talked about this before, but we're going to really take a deep dive into it. I just want to say you can't unmake what God made. And that's really what, what you're trying to do when you're looking into the 3D world and trying and struggling to manifest your desires or saying that, that God knows my struggling. And I, and I know the case you're trying to make that it, it, it might make you feel a little bit better that God knows you're struggling. But remember, if, 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 if God recognized struggling, that means it would be real, right? You're just justifying your limitations, almost like it, it gives you permission to struggle, to try. If God knows that you're struggling and trying and feels for you, then it feels okay if you do it. But God doesn't recognize that. Remember um, the quote from the Seth Materials by Jane Roberts, that channeled entity that said, struggling or, tr or, or suffering is never good for the soul unless it teaches you how not to struggle, how not to suffer. Do you get this, guy? So you can unfulfill what God already established. You are fully fulfilled. You're fully made in the image of God. Already there. So when you look in 3D reality, when you struggle with processes or affirmations trying to make something happen, you're trying to do the impossible because, because it's already within you, right? You're recognizing unfulfillment. That's impossible. Do you get this? You're trying to unmake what God made. That's impossible. You're trying to unfulfill fulfillment. That's impossible. With God, all things are possible except non-fulfillment. There's nothing outside of being God. God is all and nothing, what is and what is not. It's everything. So there is no opposite. It's not that like God is all there is and that nothing's the opposite. God is all of it. I'm not, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. That's in Revelations, one of the last verses in the Bible, 2213. That wraps it up in a nice tight bow. <laughs> so when spirit chooses, it simply announces it is a certain thing. This is Ernest Holmes. This comes out of the, the science of the mind. Very powerful teachings here. When spirit chooses, it simply announces it's a, a certain thing. In fact, so it's not even a choice. It's an announcement, right? It's, we think of it choosing among different things, choosing among fulfillment and non-fulfillment, choosing among being happy and choosing among being sad. God doesn't choose. God just announces that, that it's a certain thing and becomes it in that instant. 3D you chooses between different things. Believing non-fulfillment is an option. Believing non-fulfillment is a possibility. Do you see this? And then you struggle and try to get there. And, 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 and you process your way there. And, you, and, you, and you're talking about getting rid of beliefs and, and struggling with obstacles and blocks and all those things that don't exist. You create them all, right? Trying to make something happen or manifest something. That's what you're doing when you choose. It's really just an acceptance of your divinity, right? And all the wanting, all the needing, all the asking is like, is like, you, are try, it's like you are trying to convince non-physical or talk God into what you desire to have or be. You're trying to talk God into having or being what you desire to have or be. You're trying to talk non-physical into that when it's already yours. You are one with that. You don't have to talk or convince non-physical or God into anything. It's yours. The kingdom is yours. This is what uh, scripture says. Be not afraid, little flock, 
for your father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. Gladly to give you everything. But yet you're looking out there and, and looking at, and, and trying to create, unmake what God made. Right? So this is big. God has chosen for you to give you everything. God has chosen for you. Right? We think we're choosing among things and among alternatives, but God's already chosen for you. He's already gladly given you the kingdom. He's given you everything. You need only accept it by announcing it and aligning with it in thought, word, and deed. Do you hear this? You don't even have to choose. You just align with everything you are. God is absolute. Nothing can deny his will or choice. Nothing can deny that. It's a, you, are to, you have everything whether you like it or not, and whether you think so or not, or whether you believe it or not. It's yours, right? When you struggle and try, you are choosing something less than everything. Let me hit this again. Do you get this? When you struggle and try, or wonder where things are, or looking in 3D, what's going on, you're choosing some, you are choosing something less than everything, because you already have everything, so you're choosing something that's less, and that's impossible. Do you get this, right? You, and this is what Jesus said in John 15, uh, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you. That's your I am awareness, right? Before they call, I will answer. Isaiah 65, 24. God, you are already everything. Do you get the significance of this today, guys? Here's what Neville Goddard says. You choose life and good and blessings by being that which you choose. You choose life and good and blessings by being, by being that which you choose. You have no choice that to be it. You are it, right? The spirit does not have to will to make things happen. This is Ernest Holmes from Science of the Mind. This is big, 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 big point. The spirit, spirit does not have to will to make things happen. Things happen because it is the will of spirit that they should be. Wow. That they should be that you should be everything. That's big. Do you get it? That's the will. That's your will. The will you're one with the will of God, right? God became what it desires in the announcing and desiring of it. <clears throat> so you're saying, well, where is it then? How come? Remember, the experience is within. Fulfillment is within. God's within you. But you will, the, the perception in 3D reality, that, that is an element of time that you created. So everything doesn't happen at once. This is what uh, Ernest Holmes says about time. Time is necessary since it allows you to experience, allows experience to take place within the one. Hear this. That's what time's for. That's what 3D reality is for. Time is necessary since it allows experience to take place within the one, within that one God, within that one love. Wow, that's powerful. Everything is taking place within the one. That's what time's for. That's what the duality's for. So you can experience the one. So you can experience those things. Time is necessary since it allows experience to take place within the one. And it goes on to say, Ernest Holmes, time is never a thing of itself. It simply is a measure of experience in eternity. Right? In eternity. How do you experience eternity? That's how you do it. Time does not contradict eternity, but allows it to become expressed in terms of definite experience. There's no contradiction in eternity. Right? Time's not really a thing. It just becomes, it, it's a way to express your, and experience something definitely in eternity. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to experience it. Right? God is not a person. This is what I talked about earlier. God is a presence personified in us. So when you say, how can God not know language or fear or non-fulfillment? Remember, God's not a person, right? You're, you're, we're, God wasn't created in our image. We were created in God's. God's that presence within us. It's a spirituality. It's not a thing. It's an atmosphere of God's presence, right? Goodness and the truth and the beauty, all that. Ernest Holmes, beautiful. We were made in God's image, not God in our image. All knowing means knowing what's only real and true. That's what all-knowing means. All-knowing is the true knowledge. It's the truth. 
everything unlike truth, unreal, God doesn't know because God didn't create it and it's not real. You're, you're wanting God to recognize those illusions, those illusions of suffering, those illusions of, of poverty, those illusions of lack, that whatever that is. Right? God doesn't reckon. God is only love, and all of it is love, right? With God, all things are possible except non-fulfillment, except that. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our, our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. We have a group called the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. We have a website, TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com. Guys, until next time, this is Tom at Be Something Wonderful with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude. Creators, see you soon.